everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles because today we're talking about one-to-one -one functions, how to identify if a function is one-to-one, -one, and what it even means to be one-to-one -one in the first place. So let's go and get right into it. One-to-one -one functions. Again, we must remember the definition of a function because all one-to-one -one functions are still functions. So they still follow that definition, which is that each input has one output. Remember, we plug something in, we get something out. That's how a function works. I can't plug something in and get two different things out, right? If that's the case, then it's not a function. So one input, one output. But with one-to-one -one functions, we're kind of doing the same thing, but in the reverse direction, okay? Each output is the result of exactly one input. So we can't have an output that is the result of two or more different inputs. If that's the case, then it is not one-to-one, -one, okay? So let's go ahead and look at some examples. You may see examples like this where it's like a little chart. You can potentially see graphs or just be given an equation, so we'll do a little bit of each example. So first of all, we're gonna identify, is this a function? Well, I'm looking, I see one input, one output, so it is a function, and if you graph this as well, it would pass the vertical line test, if you remember that. So is it one-to-one, -one, first of all? So I'm looking basically that each output and I'm making sure each output is the result of exactly one in input. So each output only appears once, and is, is the re each is the result of exactly one input, so this actually is a one-to-one -one function. I'll put a big check here. Function and one-to-one. -one. What about this function? Well, I've just said function, so I gave away that it is a function, but you should know this by graphing it and drawing the vertical line test, as well as just looking at it and noticing that each input has exactly one output. You can't square something and get two different values, right? So this is a function. Is it one-to-one? -one? So I'm looking to make sure each output is a result of exactly one input. But look what I have here. I have this output four, and four is the result of two and negative two. Look at one. That's the result of one and negative one. So this is a function, but it is not one-to-one, -one. not, I'll draw a line, one-to-one. -one. That's my one-to-one. -one. Okay, f of x equals x cubed. This is our last example. Look at my x's. Each input has exactly one output. This is a function. Is it one-to-one? -one? Let's see. I'm looking at the outputs. I see each output appearing once, and each is the result of exactly one input. So this actually is a function, and it is one-to-one. -one. All right, so let's look at those examples we just did. This time, let's look at their graphs. Okay, this is y equals x squared. Remember, we said this was not one-to-one. -one. This is y equals x cubed. We said that this was one-to-one. -one. These are both functions. We can see that because they both pass the vertical line test as well as we just determined they were in the last clip. But they both pass the vertical line test. So now we're gonna come up with a test that we can use to look at a graph and decide if it's one-to-one -one or not. And it's called the horizontal line test. So if I can draw a horizontal line, if I draw a horizontal line, and I intersect with two or more points on a graph, then the equation for that graph is not one-to-one. -one. So in order for a graph to be one-to-one, -one, in order for a function to be one-to-one, -one, I need to be able to draw a horizontal line anywhere I want, and all these lines need to intersect with only one point on the graph. So in this case, bam, one, one, one. All these intersect with one point. And as long as that's true, then the function for that graph is one-to-one. -one. Okay, so why do we care whether a function is one-to-one -one or not? Well, there's an important thing we do with one-to-one -one functions, and that's we find the inverse. In order to find the inverse of a function, it must be one-to-one, -one, okay? So this is why we care. Before we can just go trying to find an inverse, we have to make sure a function is one-to-one. -one. There's only one case where we can find the inverse of a function that's not one-to-one, -to -one, and that's when we restrict the domain to make the function one-to-one. -one. And just a quick example to finish up this video on that is if, remember, we said x squared is not one-to-one -one because it fails the horizontal line test. Well, what if I restrict it to the domain of x such that x is greater than or equal to zero? Then I have this parabola starting at zero, right, at x equals zero, and going all the way up to x equals infinity. So I have only this half of the parabola. So now this is one-to-one, -one, but it's only one-to-one -one if I restrict the domain to this interval, right? So now we can actually find the inverse of this, but again, the inverse is restricted on this interval, which means the range of the inverse is that interval. And this will make more sense when you watch my video on 
finding the inverse and inverse functions and that sort of thing, which should be coming pretty soon. But hopefully this video helped. Hit like if it did. Leave any questions below in the comments. Keep flexing those brain muscles and keep making those brain gains. See you next time.